Um, another one uh, that I'll go into a little bit more detail on is um, the drug Aplodin, and it inhibits translational elongation. It is from the company uh, Pharmamar, uh, and um, ironically, they were also been, this has been approved to treat multiple myeloma in, in Australia. Uh, and maybe to go a little bit more detail into that on the next slide. There it is. Uh, yeah, this is, this is work done collaboratively with Adolfo Garcia Sastra and Chris Wright and, and Kayvon and Marco and others. So there's the drug in the upper left there, um, the structure of it, um, Aplodin. It's actually called Aplodin when it's used to treat um, uh, uh, multiple myeloma and Plodidepsin when it's used to treat COVID-19. There it is binding to its target EIF1A. That's not work from us. That was previously characterized. And interestingly, it comes from the sea squirt that it lives exclusively off the coast of Spain there in the upper left-hand corner. Then in the middle upper part there, um, what we're showing is that it's incredibly potent in, in a human cell there on the left in HEC293 cells expressing ACE2. Um, our collaborators have screened a lot of compounds, both in New York and Paris and around the world. Um, this is by far the most potent one that we've been associated with. It's 30 times more potent than remdesivir. It's at sub nanomolar IC90 value. Um, with the bar graphs there, the black and the red bar graphs, I'm just sh showing you that it's also potent in primary lung cells um, at a lower concentration than um, uh, remdesivir as well. Um, on the bottom there, um, there's mouse models that it also has where you can test these drugs, where you can introduce human ACE2 and using an adenovirus and you can affect the mice with SARS-CoV-2. You add drugs, you extract the lungs and you look at viral titers from the lungs and the bar graph there in the bottom in the middle is just showing you get a reduction, about a 500 fold reduction of viral infection with aplodin at a much lower concentration that's being used for remdesivir and, and seemingly much more potent. And um, in parallel to this, we've been uh, collaborating with the company Pharmamar that, that makes this drug to treat multiple myeloma and they completed a phase two clinical trial data. We're actually putting this paper together uh, for submission, I hope next week. Um, and that data, that trial to date looked in, um, incredibly uh, promising. And um, if you just go to the next slide, just uh, about a week ago, uh, it's been approved for phase three clinical trials for COVID-19 at 27 different sites across uh, 12 different countries. And the trials evaluate, uh, evaluating um, the combination of aplodin with dexamethasone and comparing it to standard of care, which is obviously um, um, remdesivir. Um, so, uh, you know, hopefully this will be another um, uh, tool in, in the toolbox that we could be using to, to, to fight not just SARS-CoV-2, but, but, but future um, pandemics. And I just saw a question there in the question box about the, uh, a further uh, clarification on toxicity. And obviously toxicity is an issue, but what I'd like to point out here, again, is it's acute. You know, a few days maybe you'd need it versus weeks or months if you're treating multiple myeloma. And it's being used at a much lower concentration to treat um, COVID-19 than it's being used to treat multiple myeloma as well. So hopefully um, for those reasons, toxicity won't be such an issue here in this context. And as I said, hopefully, hopefully we'll all be hearing more about this in the future.